Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with exercise 3A of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 73, and the question I'm going to do is 18. It reads, a particle is fired from a, a fi fired with initial speed u. It is fired at an angle f to the horizontal from a point on a horizontal plane. And we're, show we're asked to show what the initial velocity is to this greatest height and its range. And we're finally asked what angle of projection will, uh, will give the maximum, maximum range. Now, this question is slightly different to others in that we don't have any figures. Alright, so say for example you're getting an expression for s sub y, the greatest height, that's equal to this. Now that might look a bit mad. And you might say, well there are no numbers in this. How, how is that? How, what's the use of that? Well this is the general expression. So for any question you ever do, somebody says, well what is the maximum height? You literally go, well, what's my initial speed? You'll find it might be 10. What's my angle of projection? Alpha might be equal to 30. And then you've all the numbers, because this here is just 2 times 9.81. And you have this number and this one. And you just get, you'll get the answer straight out. So it's more just a general expression rather than specifics. And to be honest, these are a much better way of doing it. So the first thing we need to do is work out what the initial velocity is. So, say this is my initial velocity vector here, I'm going to call it u. And u, of course, is not in one of, it's not in just one of the two, two dimensions. We'll say if this is i hat, and this here is j hat, well u, of course, is in both dimensions. It's got a bit of both. So what we need to do is resolve the resultant vector u into its component unit vectors. So we'll say this vector here is parallel to the uh, i-hat unit vector, and this one here is parallel to the j-hat unit vector. Remember, these are the two vectors which, when added together, will give you your resultant vector u. So this is u sub x, and this is u sub y. Now, of course, we know that u is equal to u sub x i-hat plus u sub y j-hat, like so. That's, that's the answer. Now the thing is, we need to find out exactly what u sub x and u sub y are. So for that reason, we're going to discuss sine, cosine, and tangent. So from Sakatoa, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we just apply that over here, we'll call this angle here theta, or is it alpha? We'll say actually it's alpha, I'm pretty sure it's alpha he uses. So what's sine of alpha? Uh, we're just going to call this the opposite and the adjacent rather than u sub x and u sub y. Therefore sine of alpha is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is equal to u. Therefore the opposite is equal to u sine alpha. That's the first thing. Similarly if you do cosine you'll get that cos alpha is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is equal to u. Therefore, the adjacent is equal to u cos alpha. We've done that before. That's nothing new to us. So as a result, we can say this. That u sub y is equal to u sine alpha. And u sub x is equal to u cos alpha. And as a result of that, you can write a full expression for this u here by saying that it's equal to like that. And that's the answer to part one of your question. Now that was pretty straightforward. It's nothing you haven't done before, but uh, that's it just done out explicitly. Next, we need to find the maximum range, or the maximum height, shall we say. So first of all, we're going to put in the quantities that we know for both dimensions. And we know the accelerations are as normal, and we just found out the velocities. And t, of course, is the same. Now we want to find out when the particle is at its maximum height. And we know when it is because if, for example, I'm throwing a ball into the air, or you throw your bottle for now if you want into the air, it goes up, it'll stop, and it'll come back down. So you'll know that when it's at its maximum height, the velocity would be equal to zero. Well, the velocity in the y direction would be equal to zero. So in this case, we know that v is equal to zero. All right, so the next thing you're going to do 
is get an expression for v to, in order to get our rt. So we'll say, yeah, you can see that there. Remember, of course, that v is equal to u plus at. So v is equal to u plus at is equal to u sine alpha plus gt. So u sine alpha plus gt is equal to v is equal to zero. All right. So the next thing we're just going to do is arrange for t. So we know that t is equal to t is equal to where are we now? T is equal to minus u sine alpha over g. Now, I'm going to tell you something and I want you to bear with me. I've said the whole way along in every video so far that we always have g as plus g and we never say negative g. We never do that because it, well, it doesn't really matter if we do it, but, but it's just a lot easier to do it, and you make a lot less mistakes if you do it. However, in this book, the author has always put in g as minus g. So, for example, if he was doing this, if he gave a, uh, the textbook solution, will say, will say this. And the reason is because he will have said it's negative g. But we have the same answer. Because we're saying this is minus, when we put in g, we're going to put in minus 9.81. And the two minuses will cancel, giving us a positive. So what I want you to do is, you do what you like, of course, however, I suggest always leaving G positive. It means that you'll make a lot less mistakes. So let's just put that in up here. So it's minus U sine alpha over G. Now it's time to, uh, it's time to just carry on. We're trying, of course, to find the range, or s sub y. So what do we do is, we let me so, so you can see that there. Yes, you can. So s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. So s sub y is equal to ut, which is u sine alpha t plus a half g t squared. And we know what t is already. So if you look at that, uh, if you look at that, you're going to see um, yeah, it's it's going to it's going to work out. So we're going to say s sub y is equal to u sine alpha t ti or not t. Excuse me, we've already we've said that we're going to put in minus u sine alpha and that's over g. And secondly, we're going to put in plus half. We'll say g over 2, we'll say that's a half g, times t squared, so it's going to be minus u sine alpha over g squared. Alright, so now all we need to do is be careful with our algebra and we'll be flying it. So that's minus u squared sine squared alpha over g. And this squared will get plus g over 2 u squared sine squared alpha over g squared. And of course the g will cancel with the g squared, so let's get rid of that. Now, and that's equal to s sub y. Now let's look at that. We have a half minus 1. Well, of course, look, it's u squared sine squared alpha over 2g minus u squared sine squared alpha over g. So s sub y will be equal to minus u squared sine squared alpha over 2g. And that's the answer. In the book, of course, it says u squared sine squared alpha over 2g. And in other words, it says plus. Of course, that doesn't matter because we have defined g as being a negative number anyway. So it's, it's fine, we're okay, That's, that is the correct answer. So next we're asked to find the maximum range. Okay, so we need to do the same thing again, however, to talk about our range. So, this time t of course has changed. How do you know it's, we're, we're at our maximum range? We know we're at our maximum range when s sub y, the distance above the x-axis, is equal to zero. 
So S of y is equal to ut plus a half at squared. Like so. And we, know, we want that to equal zero. So we'll say u sine alpha t plus a half half gt squared is equal to zero. Like that. All right. So let's see what we can get here. Just let me think now. I'm just going to have a look at my at some of my notes. Two. Okay, so I know what yeah I know what I'm going to do here now. All right, so that's just t plus a half. Now this is of course is a quadratic of degree two or polynomial of degree two or quadratic, and uh, we're just going to solve this as normal. Now I'm not going to use the formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared over four ac or b squared minus four ac over two a because we don't have a constant. So it's just going to be take out t. Like that. If two things are multiplied together to give zero, then one of them must be zero. So t is equal to zero. And in this case, t is equal to minus u sine alpha. So that's actually two u over g. Just rearrange this formula here. And this does this make sense? Well, yes, it does. Because this is the formula for when the particle is on the ground. Of course it's on the ground because it's fired from the ground t is equal to zero. And we're saying this is the time for maximum range. For the same reason as last time, ignore this minus. That's 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 just fine, because we've we've defined g here as being a different a different to that than in the book. So I'm just going to note this here at the bottom, so you don't need to see that. Over g. Okay, so all that we need to do now is plug that into the, our expression for the range. So s sub y is equal to u t plus a half a t squared. So this is two u sine alpha over g. So this is u cos alpha t. So put the two of them together. Like that. And we're going to get minus 2 u squared cos alpha sine alpha over g. Now, where are my tables? Can I find my tables here anyway? Uh, sign. Let me think there now for a second. I'm trying to think the uh, of the the substitution you can make in the tables, but uh, I think sine two a. I I I think I don't I can't think it off the top of my head. Is equal to half cos a sine a. I think that's what it is, sine 2a. Yeah, well look, just look in your tables and find out which one it is. It, it doesn't really matter. So all you'll do basically is you, you make your substitution. So you'll say, you'll, you put together your cos alpha, sine alpha, and you put that into sine 2 alpha. So you're going to get something like this. You're going to get minus, just one second there now, sine squared. Uh, yeah, it must be 2. Yes, actually I'll tell you what it is. It's sine 2a is equal to 2 sine a cos a. And what that means is if you look, you have 2 sine a cos a. So therefore, what we actually have is equal to sine 2a. So we'll say that this is equal to minus u squared sine 2a, or 2 alpha over g. And what do we look? If you look in the book, that's exactly what we have. Uh, of course, he has a positive. But remember, we've defined gravity as, as different, so it's the same answer. So that's that correct. And finally, then we're asked to find the the maximum range. Maximum range. And I would do this differently. I do this via calculus. I would do this via calculus. Maximum range. Do you know something? I'm going to do a separate video on uh, how to find the maximum the maximum range because, I, like I said, I do it via calculus. Something which you won't be able to do in fifth year. But doing your leaving certs and having done, we'll say, the end of fifth year, you'll definitely be able to do this. So look, I'm going to leave it for there. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.